Welcome to this investor update presentation. Uh, in this presentation today, it will be me, Lena Sundqvist, CEO of Climon, and Carl Arneson, the CFO of Climon, presenting. And the content of this presentation is first that we will give a background of Climon. After that, we will present what we do within the energy and industry business area followed what we do within the maritime business area <clears throat> then we will go through what we do within product development then Carl will present what we do in finance and then after summary it will be time for q a and for this presentation we have got loads of questions from you pre-registered questions so we have tried to include as many of those presentations as we can within the actual presentation and then we will try to answer as many of those questions as we can before we finish this presentation at 11. So starting with a background of Climon and a lot of you participating here today know Climon quite well, but we also have some new people joining for the first time. And this presentation we also have available afterwards on our website. So we can see also that we have many downloads afterwards for new people uh, watching our presentations. So therefore we give an update of Climon and what we're doing, summary of that. So Climon was founded in 2011. And we have a heat power system which converts low temperature heat into clean electricity with a very high efficiency. We are around 45 employees and headquarters in Schista outside Stockholm. We have more than 40 units in operation globally. And the units that we have in operation is our heat power 150 system. And that system, we have on board a number of vessels at ship owners such as Virgin Voyages, Mask, Viking Line and Havila. We also having units being installed in power generation. We have installations in industry, for example, SSRB in Borlänge, and we have geothermal uh, heat power systems in operation. Uh, what we are doing now is that we are developing and taking our next generation of heat power out to the market. That is our heat power 300 system and we will give you an update in this presentation where we stand related to that. For all our system we also have a Climon Live system and that is a cloud-based monitoring system which monitors the performance of all our systems globally. So we can uh, see the performance of all our system, both service engineers from all over the world, and we can also monitor all our systems from our headquarters here in Shista. And an update what has been happening in Climon the last quarter. Within the energy and industry, we have our new manager now, Patrick, who is heading this business area. And here we have a number of intensified dialogues and negotiations ongoing with customers within this field. And we will come back to that in a bit more detail. And we're also implementing Heat Power 150 units in an engine power plant in UK. And that is plant is what you see on the picture here. In the maritime area, we're also having discussions and negotiations with a number of customers, both ship owners and shipyards. We come back to that. And what you see on the pictures here is the marine team uh, presenting and exhibiting on um, cruise exhibition, the world's largest cruise ex exhibition in Miami. Within product development, there is a lot of work ongoing. And since we have a lot of detailed discussions ongoing now with the customer relating to performance, documentation and certification, our R&D team is working really dedicating to make sure 
and secure that we live up to everything that the customer is expecting from us. And that goes very well. So we come back with more details about that. And then in finance, we are keeping our cost base and cash flow according to our plan. And Carl will present that in a bit more detail. So starting with energy and industry, uh, we see that this is a very interesting market for us. And what we do there and what our heat power system does is that we provide a solution for producing sustain and sustainable and cost effective electricity. As you all know, all over the world, the need for electricity is increasing. And there is also a higher cost of electricity than most of us are used to. <clears throat> and there is also now a lot of both countries and also industries which want to be more independence when it comes to electricity. Countries want to get away from gas and individual industries does not trust that they can buy as much electricity that they want from the grid. So therefore they want to produce more electricity at site and be as energy independent as they can be. There's of course also a big focus on decarbonization and environmental focus. And the target customers that we are working with here and what most customers want is that they want a return of investment of less than five years. And that includes then our equipment, also installation cost and operating cost. So we are mainly focusing in this business area on customers in Europe and UK, which can have a return of investment of less than five years. So an example in the industry, there's a lot of industrial customers which are interested in energy efficiency, buying less electricity from the grid, and also that want to decarbonize. And most of them want, as I said, uh, return of investment of less than five years. So the countries and the customers that we focus on here is the ones that has a high electricity and fuel cost, which is more or less the case all over Europe now. Some of these industries also have financial incentives to decarbonize, and that even improves the business case even more. And then there's some general technical condition that also needs to be met to have a good fit be between those industries and our solution. And that is that this should be a heat source available of the right temperature and flow rates. And preferably, there should also be a cold source available of the right temperature and flow rate. And if there's not a cold source available, then we can also use external coolers. And then it's good if the integration is as simple as possible to do this cost effectively. And here we are working with a number of customers in different stages. Some of these customer negotiations has come very, very far. And we are now specifying to get together with them regarding all the different technical specifications. <clears throat> we are calculating and we have been calculating how much electricity we can produce at their site. Uh, making sure that we live up to the requirements on certifications. We are discussing delivery time, prices, payment terms, and also responsibilities. So there's a lot of work ongoing here. And um, then we also have a number of more customers that we are working with that there's also making detailed studies now of the integration cost of uh, Climon Heat Power 300 to their plants. So a lot of activities and focus here. Then also in the energy field, uh, there's a lot of focus within the energy field to produce more <clears throat> efficient, cost-effective, sustainable power. And in many countries now, uh, there's being uh, solar and wind being installed. And as we all know, that cannot be used as baseload power, that intermittent power. And then there's the need for backup power and flexible power. And that can be made 
together with engines. So we are, for example, working in a project in UK uh, where our heat power 150 units is now being put into containers, which you see on the picture here. And they'll be taken to the plant later on this year and being installed and in operation. And here, together with Landmark that we are working on, they're also working with additional sites. And as we do in all business areas, there is a need for making quite detailed engineering before we can sign any orders. <clears throat> so that has also been made for these sites. So what you see in the schematic picture here is engineering work made with our heat power 300 units. And this is what it will look like when our heat power 300 units is put into a container. That is what you see in the blue with the climb on tagline on. And then a climb on heat power unit will be connected to two engines. And that is what you see in the uh, green containers. And there's a number of ex external coolers also to this. So a lot of work and interesting things ongoing also here. So we move over to uh, Maritime. And the ones of you that has been following us for a long time, uh, we have talked before that there's a lot of focus within the maritime industry on energy efficiency. And ship owners want to save on their fuel cost and also to decarbonize their fleet. And there's coming more and more legislation when it comes to energy efficiency in the maritime market. And the customers that we focus on, first of all, it's we talk to ship owners. And, and the target group ship owners for us are the one that's having quite large engines on board the ships that you see in the pictures here. So that is, for example, container ships and cruise ships. So we have had discussions and a lot of work together with them for a long time to calculate how much fuel we can save on board the ships and how much electricity we can produce with our climate heat power units. Several of them have put uh, waste heat recovery into their yard specification. So we have also over quite some time worked together with yards, also together with them calculate how much electricity we can produced with climate heat power. We have also had detailed discussions with them on installation and uh, sending over a lot of documentation to them regarding how, how our unit and how it should be installed. Uh, the shipyards are calculating the installation cost, doing a lot of engineering work. And then there's also discussion together again with uh, ship owners regarding um, cost of our spare parts and service. So ship owners can calculate the whole return of investment for installing our units together with the yards, uh, uh, having the cost for engineering and installation of our units and also together with the operating cost. So a lot of work and also detailed discussions with customers here in this business area. Uh, our marine team has been meeting customers uh, over the last quarter in various countries in Europe, also in Asia, where many of the shipyards is located, especially then South Korea, where they built a lot of container ships, and also in US. So we were, for example, uh, exhibiting on a sea trade Cruise Global, that is an event for uh, the cruise industry. So we were exhibiting there in, uh, in March in Miami. So that is what you see on this picture. And then we are, of course, also uh, working on our commitment toward our six existing customers with Heat Power 150, continuously integrating that into uh, the ship owners that we have already sold to. And in this quarter, that's mainly been worked together with Havila and Virgin Voyages. 
So with that, we move into product development. And here, uh, as we have now very detailed discussions with our customers and we know what the customers expect for us, then our R&D team is safeguarding that we can live up to all of that. So we have our heat power 300, and 300 unit here at, the, at our site in Shista at our test center. And that is being tested and at the full flow. So, uh, and that was also a question that we get as a pre-registered question. Uh, but this unit is being tested at the customer full flow here in Shista. So we can make sure that we live up to the performance and the product production of electricity that customers are expecting from us. We have also uh, produced the detailed documentation for customers. And that is both for marine customers and also for customers within energy and industry. So they can take our product documentation and calculate uh, engineering and installation costs for that. And we have also made a lot of uh, product documentation for production so we can produce these units. Then the R&D is also working with a lot of certification work. So we are making sure that we can live up to uh, the certification requirements for the maritime societies and also for the energy and industry that we first of all live up to certification for CE for the European market and then we also can live up to the grid code compliance which is needed. Then we're also working on building up an effective and cost-effective supply chain with suitable subcontractors for components and equipments. Throughout the development of our Heat Power 300, we have also been working with patents and IP. Uh, first of all, making sure that we're not intrusing to any other companies' uh, patents or IP rights. And then we're also working on adding more uh, patents for us. So, in the last quarter, we have filed one new patent application and we're also working on a number of additional patents to be filed. And since there has been a lot of development work and we've also worked with patents, we have been quite restricted so far with taking people to our test site. But now, as we go into another stage, we can open up our test site and at our annual general meeting, which will be held May 16, it's possible for all of you that would like uh, to join us for a tour of the Climate Test Site and also for an introduction of Heat Power 300. We have had already quite a few people registrating for this, so it will be me and also our R&D manager, Jonas Mullen, who will guide you to our test center. So if there's any one of you who's interested, please send out, uh, register for this event. So with that, I will hand over to Carl for some finance. Thank you, Lena. <clears throat> um... First, I would like to um, put some light on our um, financially key focus areas going forward. Um, and those can be summarized into three main areas. And I will exclude all the sales activities that, that Liana has um, uh, just described. First of all, uh, the profit profitability of, of Heat Power 300. Um, uh, business cases where we continuously are working on the cost side of the new system. That is important for us in order to be in a good position as the product is to be rolled out to our customers and to the different markets. These activities include uh, cost efficient sourcing of components uh, with dual sourcing if, it, if applicable and assembling testing process processes as well as 
freight and tr transportation. Uh, so, so basically, this covers the whole supply chain uh, for the new product. And as previously mentioned, an improved gross margin uh, for Heat Power 300 uh, compared to the, our previous product generation is essential for us, uh, both for possibility and the positive cash flow going forward. Moving into uh, the uh, the cost side, <clears throat> um, keeping our cost base at a minimum up until the rollout has, uh, has started for Heat Power 300, uh, that is essential for us. And I've talked about that before. Um, so before we can report new sales or new new orders, uh, we are therefore working hard in order to to keep our costs down. Uh, therefore, I'm, I'm happy to see that our cost base continued to be in line with our plan also during the first quarter this year. Both organizational costs as well as op other OPEX declined versus both Q1 last year and Q4 uh, last year. The organizational cost uh, in our PL is a major part of our, of our cost base uh, and we have we have an organization in place that, that can deliver uh, in line with our, our plan going forward. Minor investments are, are planned going forward for especially marketing and commercial activities, um, but it's not estimated to have any certain impact on our co current cost level. So uh, therefore, uh, I do not see any significant changes to the operational cost uh, in the near future. Um, moving over to our cash flow um, and the operational cash flow uh, must also, of course, maintain at a low level uh, before we can can roll out the, the new product generation um, in order to minimize our cash flow uh, out in that sense. This, of course, goes in line with, with the cost based development, as I just talked about, um, but it also includes uh, um, working capital. Uh, where we during the first quarter saw a, a slightly negative development. Um, this is mainly related to our uh, deliveries of uh, heat, uh, heat power 150 units uh, to our customer project in the UK. Uh, that is, has been going on during the first quarter. Climate has taken the production cost for those units, uh, but they are not yet paid for. Um, so further accounts receivables was, was booked during the quarter um, and we expect that the full order amount for this customer project uh, will contribute with, with a positive cash flow effect uh, of around 20 million sec during uh, the year. Also, finally, I would like to uh, just give a make a short comment on the new auction model uh, that Nasdaq has, has announced for some illiquid shares on, on First North Growth. Um, these new rules that are to be implemented during 2024 uh, for shares with a low liquidity uh, will be ba will based on the current situation and not target the climate share. Um, the climate share has, has a relatively high liquidity uh, and a low spread. So uh, this can of course change since, since uh, the targeted shares will be, be decided based on, on shared data during Q3 and Q4 uh, this year. These type of, of, of changes uh, are announced by, by Nasdaq from time to time, but Klyman is monitoring this on a regular basis. Uh, but as mentioned, as it looks like we do not need to invest in a liquidity provider, uh, which is the alternative to this auction model. And by that, um, I will thank them. Thank you, Carl. So we continue with a summary. And these are our current focus areas. Energy and industry, maritime product development and finance that we have been presenting today. And it's also really great, feels great to have one person now in the management team of Climon heading everyone or each of everyone of those different areas that we focus on. Uh, 
And with that, it is time for Q&A. And as we have been doing the last times when we had this uh, investor update presentation, we'll hand over to Laura, who will moderate this Q&A session. Thank you very much, Lena, and thank you very much, Carl. Uh, as per usual, you have two ways to uh, ask your questions. You can either post them in the chat or you can raise your hand. Uh, and after that, we will give you the floor in, in the order that we get the questions in. Uh, as Lena already said, we have received a lot of questions. Some of them are the same, so we have bundled some of them, um, but the target is to be able to take as many as possible, of course. So bear in mind that sometimes the question we, we ask is related to your question, but maybe not directly the, the, the ones, uh, ones you sent in. Uh, okay, let's kick it off by a few of the pre-registered questions. The first one is uh, for you, Lena. Uh, you talked about the advanced negotiations. Could you elaborate a little bit on what industries or companies they are done with? Yes, yeah, so we are working a lot with customers now in the different business areas we have. So within marine energy and industry. And was that question related to industry as such, which industry customers? Yes. Yeah. Cool. And within industry, we are working with various types of industries. So for us, it does not matter so much whether it's a paper mill, a steel mill, plastic factory, uh, petrochemical industry. Most important is that it has waste heat available and also that uh, there's a good uh, business case. So we see now that there's an interest for different areas and food industry and actually plastic industries are um, there is. Uh, yeah, several of those that's interested in uh, in making energy savings. Perfect. Thank you very much, Lena. Uh, and then the next one is for you, Carl. What is the 2023 forecast for sales and business and what does the business pipeline look like? Thank you. Yes, um, we are, of course, working very hard in order to 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 close the first uh, orders for for heat power 300. Uh, and that is and has also been uh, our number one focus for some time now. Um, and and as, as Lena mentioned, we have been very clear in the report that we are now in to, in advanced negotiations. Um, by signing new orders, uh, that is also the best way for us to to prove that that Heat Power 300 uh, can be sold and rolled out. Uh, then of course we have targets for new orders for for uh, both short and midterm, uh, and a sales funnel with with uh, dialogues and neg negotiations at, at different stages. Uh, but but before we communicate any short or midterm targets on on sales, we want to prove the 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 sales uh, for Heat Power Three Hundred with with the, uh, the the first new orders. Thank you very much, Carl. Uh, and then Lena, the next one is for you. Um, how will you? Um, have the organization focused on sales and, and closing deals? How are you working internally with that to keep the focus? Yeah, we have done actually quite a few things on that. And uh, one thing that we have done is also changes within the management team. Uh, when I started, it was two persons in the management team for technical things. Now that is one person, uh, Jonas, having all the technical things within Climon, and instead we have two persons uh, heading uh, a business area each. So we have Fredrik having the marine team with a lot of focus there. Uh, and we also now have Patrick heading the energy and industry area and also adding resources to their team. So switching over, not only doing product development and taking care of our equipment, but now much more focus on the business and sales. Thank you very much, Lena. Uh, it looks like we have no raised hands and no questions in the chat, so we will continue um, with the pre-registered questions, but please bear in mind that at any point in time you are very welcome to raise your hand or propose the question. Um, Lena, continuing with you and the HP 300, is it fully uh, developed and fully tested? Uh, it's been just over two and a half years since a loan was taken to further develop the product. 
And I think we have a number of different questions on HP 300 and the stages for that product. So maybe we can answer them all now. Yeah. Uh, starting with this like long time for development, uh, that was communicated before I started the climb on. Uh, but when I joined Climon, we took uh, we did some changes within <clears throat> uh, the focus within product development. So there's a big focus uh, over the last two years to really focus on a product that meets customer expectations and is a cost effective product for doing really good business cases at the customers. And that has been the focus since I started. And the product is being developed now, and we are now uh, safeguarding that we live up to all the requirements that our customers have on us. And that so we know and are sure what we can sign contracts on uh, with customers. So, but there is, of course, always continuous development needing to be done. Um, for example, uh, after having these first versions available, we know that we want to do even more for uh, having the cost down, for example, or do variations. Uh, it would be also interesting if we going forward can have additional certifications, for example, for additional markets. So we have a system now which works with the market that we focus on. And uh, then will be continuous R&D work. Thank you, Lena. I think we had one raised hand, but it is now lowered. So if there's somebody on the line who wants to uh, ask a question, then please go ahead and unmute your line. Yes, um, Carl Green Energy. Um, please go ahead and unmute your line and ask your question. Yes. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, how do you? Uh, what is your expansion plan? Having a lot of development in South and Africa in terms of uh, green hydrogen production. Uh, that could be a very good area in terms of capturing the heat with the system. Um, have you ever thought about your the expansion in that area? With a lot of developments going on now to set up green hydrogen projects around there? Yes, hello, and really, really nice to hear from you. Uh, yes, we actually get a lot of questions from Africa. Uh, we know that there is a lot of work being done there, uh, both when it comes to industry and also geothermal business. And we also get a lot of requirements and interest for, from US and also from Asia. So uh, we think it's really, really interesting what all of you are doing and we follow it closely. What we have said is that we need to have the focus on Europe first, putting the systems on the European market first, and then we can add to uh, additional markets. So it's really interesting what, what you're doing in Africa and uh, also in other parts of the world outside of Europe. So, um, yeah, so really, really interested and uh, I think that also you are one of them that has contacted us previously. Yeah, no, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, we will next take a question from the chat and this one is for uh, Carl. Uh, did I understand that you had deliveries that will affect cash flow positively with 20 million sec during the rest of 2023? What did this come from? That is correct. Uh, that was was what, what I said. Uh, um, this is related to to the um, the order that was uh, earlier uh, communicated uh, that ha had been rewritten with a new partner. Um, the origin original uh, order was signed uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and is related to to landmarks uh, um, um, uh, power plant Rhodesia. Um, where we now, as, as Leanna also mentioned, for, for the events, uh, Q1 events, have now delivered uh, our units um, and the full order amount for, for, for uh, that one is approximately 20 million a second and, and those deliveries will be 
made fully during this year. Uh, so uh, it will contribute uh, positively to our cash flow going forward. Thank you very much, Carl. And we have one further question in the chat, and this one is for you, Lena. Uh, at this stage, what are the main areas where customers need to be convinced to go from interest to actual orders? Yeah. Um, there's several things, of course. One thing is the actual hard fact that we are working on to really do calculations on the amount of electricity that we can produce at their site. And also uh, they're doing all their investigation and uh, work regarding an analyzation regarding engineering and installation cost and also operating cost. So all of that like hard facts needs to be there. Uh, we are also having customer doing audits of us and there we are giving them uh, and going through all of our processes. They are asking about various things where we need to show all our um, all our documentations and all our processes. And then we have also customers visiting us uh, want to come here to Shista to see our equipment in operation and also meeting the management team. And um, uh, so there's both really hard facts that we are working on. Uh, there's processes, audits and also soft values like meeting me and Carl and um, hearing about our plans and how we work in this company. So there's uh, variations of different things that we work with with these um, uh, customers. Thank you very much, Lena. Uh, it looks like we have no further questions from the lines or in the chat. So we will take one of the pre-registered questions. Um, this one is for you, Carl. Could you elaborate on the possible need to at some point raise more equity? Uh, Yes, I would say say that that the best way for Climate as a company to to secure profitability and long term financing is is to to actually cl close new deals and new orders and to deliver the modules to to the customers as 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 mentioned now during the presentation. Uh, I, I think there, there's nothing more important for us as a company to to actually uh, deliver on that. Um, and that is also what, what the, both uh, us as a management team and the rest of the staff is, is spending the majority of our time on uh, currently. Um, and, and and along with that, uh, and which I also was elaborating on, on during my slides, it, it is also to, to ensure that the gross margin of, of Heat Power 300 uh, is, is, is um, um, uh, it's uh, improved versus HP 150 uh, that has a weak profitability. Um, and we have been very clear uh, about that also in, in um, the, the, both this report as, as well as in previous reports that that is something that we're working on. Um, and, and finally, regarding the uh, long term financing of the company that is uh, always been mon that is always been monitoring by on a regular basis by the board who actually owns this question and, and I should not be answering on, on behalf of them. Uh, so yeah, that is, is more or less the, the, the question, uh, the answer on that question. Uh, thank you very much, Carl. Uh, and then we have one more question uh, in the chat. Are there any questions from customers regarding Climans financial status? Yes, there is. Uh, that is, of course, something that our customers is asking about. Uh, when they, I mean, many of the customers are, or the customers that we work with are very serious customers and they are looking into all our books and everything we're doing and going through our report and going through our annual report so of course there is also questions of that uh, that we are handling 
and I can also add something that that, that that is is as as Elena mentioned before that this is something that is is a part of of, of also these customers uh, audits of of new suppliers. Um, so so in that sense, I would say yes, of course, it, it is something that that uh, they ask are asking about. But also, I would say for a, a relatively small company as as Climon working in, in within this field, and uh, that is a natural question to ask. Uh, I would have, have asked that question myself if I, I would have been a potential customer. Very good. Uh, and I said uh, it is still time or there is still time to post any questions you might have in the chat or then raise your hand. I see no further questions there, so we will take one of the pre-registered ones. Um, the HP 300, uh, why was it not delivered to the landmark project? Yeah, uh, the first site that Landmark is now uh, constructing in the UK, Rhodesia, uh, their Climon already in 2019 booked an order with HP 150. So what we did in the last quarter is that we rewrote that order with the EPC that is now constructing this power plant. So there was an old order with units that were already produced, which we just rewrote with the right uh, counterpart. So if there will be additional sites, or when it's time for additional sites, then of course it will be Heat Power 300. Thank you very much. Um, we will take just a few or one more actually pre-registered question. So if you would like to raise a question, this is uh, the time to do that. Um, one question for you, Carl, we're still um, revolving around the same themes here. When will Climion stand on its own two feet without having to uh, push for funding externally? Uh, I, I would say that, that 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 goes in line with, with more or less the, the same answer as I did regarding uh, any any funding or, or capital raising uh, that 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 goes in line with with for us to as a company to to first of all to 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 deliver on on uh, actually selling heat power 300 that is, is the first uh, target for us uh, and something that we're work, working very hard with uh, at this moment um and and um Regarding, as I also mentioned before, regarding the the prognosis for for sales, uh, but by but by uh, for for in in the same sense, I would say that that at this stage we do not uh, communicate any any uh, targets or prognosis for for sales, uh, which would have been the same thing as as also to to say when we should be. Uh, producing a pos positive cash flow. Very clear. Thank you very much. Um, we have no further questions from the lines and nobody has raised their hand, so I hand over to Lena. Okay. Thank you, Laura, and thank you for all your really good questions, as always. Uh, so with that, I would like to close this session. And uh, also welcome you to our annual general meeting on May 16. We have quite a few already signed up, but there there is an opportunity to meet me and Carl and the rest of the management team and also our board. And then in connection to that, take a tour to our test site and see our heat power 300 units. And then we publish the Q2 report on July 18. So thank you everyone.